hello everyone and welcome to my adobe photoshop tutorial in this episode i'm going to show you how to do some advanced color manipulations in adobe photoshop all right so what you see right now on the screen awesome people is the finished effect and this is my raw file so you're going to be starting off with this and you're going to convert this image into this so you can see how i'm changing the entire mood of the image by doing some color correction and this can be used a lot in high-end photo manipulations all right so getting started awesome people i'm going to be using a very advanced color selection tool of adobe photoshop known as color range so the way this tool works awesome people is it selects the same kind of color in your image so the main way i'm going to be using this is by i'm going to select all the different colors and then you're going to be piling up all the different adjustment layers for getting that look now this is something that cannot be achieved by just doing hue and saturation and just changing the sliders here and there this is something that's going to take a little time it's going to take 10 to 15 minutes but the end result is definitely worth it so let's get started so i have gone to select i've taken color range and i'm going to click somewhere over here to select a base selection so I'm going to click over here and you can see how everything gets selected over here. So anyone over here or some people who is new to color range, just remember one thing, black not selected, white selected. So white selected, black not selected, black not selected, white selected. Simple as that. Nothing else to worry about. You don't have to play around with all these settings. This is something that honestly I have never ever used. There are different ways of selecting skin tones of hair and stuff. So honestly. If you're working with something like this where uh, you have to work with loose selections, loose selections meaning you don't have to work with precise selections. If you're working with something like that, color range is the best option that you have. Believe me, I have practiced Photoshop a little bit. <laughs> All right, so I'm going to take my uh, eyedrop. I'm going to click somewhere to get my base selection, something like that. And then what I'm going to do awesome people is I'm going to hold on the shift key for adding to the selection so this works a lot similar to the uh, to, to the polygonal lasso or to the rectangle or to the elliptical marquee tool i'm gonna hold on my shift key i'm gonna click somewhere over here to get more of my selection now what i'm trying to do awesome people is i'm not trying to select everything within one go because if you do that your themes and your color hues will not match and the whole uh, image is going to look fake the, the thing that we're trying to achieve with this is photorealism we don't want this to look photoshop we want this to look something that was captured by a camera so just remember that and you're going to click this and there we go i'm going to click ok to make a selection and there we go awesome people we have gotten a loose selection so i'm going to without deselecting anything i'm going to come to my adjustments uh dialog box or drop down menu i'm going to click on here and saturation and now i don't want to do something very drastic i just want to take this to minus 15 or to somewhere around minus 10 or actually minus 8 would do Two. I'm gonna go to saturation. I'm gonna bump this up to two. I'm gonna take the lightness. I'm gonna take this down to minus two. There we go. Or say minus one would. Or actually, just zero would is fine. And actually, I'm gonna take it down to minus two. And there we go. We have we have added like a base selection, and we are kind of getting closer to where, uh, you know, what the image or what the effect that we are looking for. Next, awesome people. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go for select color range one more time, and this time I'm gonna go for the box on these main trunks in the uh, in the image so basically what i'm trying to do right now awesome people is i'm trying to select all of this so that it so that we can give it a little bit of red tint what happens is awesome people if you have a lot of red around you it's just a, a you know a matter of common sense that uh, everything around you is going to have like a slight uh, reddish tint and believe me it's going to be very subtle but definitely adds to the entire image now I want to talk to you guys about fuzziness. So what is fuzziness? Now fuzziness or some people is basically like a setting which tells uh, Photoshop how strict you want uh, your selections to be. So say or some people if I was to click over here, it's going to say okay you know what the thing that I clicked on the, my sample color you have to be very strict with it. If I increase the fuzziness you're going to be like okay you know what the hues and the coloring is the same thing you can select the other thing as well. So if you reduce this down to minus 30 or say 30, this is going to give you a very strict selection. And if you take it up, it's going to give you a more loose selection. Now in this case, I don't want to work with 127. I just, I just want to work with 50 and 50 is fine. I'm going to click on these box and you can see how everything just gets selected instantly. So that's good. And again, white selected, black not selected. So you can see how all, pretty much all the, the, the main trunks of the trees are getting selected and even a few box over here. You know these branches that's really nice click ok and give it a little time and there you go we have gotten ourselves a good selection made i'm gonna go over here take hue and saturation one more time 
take this down to say somewhere around minus 10 I'm gonna take this to plus 5 I'm gonna bring this down just a little bit to say somewhere around 5 I mean, I mean minus 5 and there we go we can see how subtle that change is but it definitely adds to the final composite believe me this thing is gonna help okay so we have gotten two layers done now what we can do awesome people is gonna we're gonna go um, to our main image one more time I'm gonna go to select color range and this time awesome people we want to basically select the core uh, region of our image because you can see like as soon as you see the image the first thing that you see is this part right here this circular elliptical part that's the main focal point and uh, it, it still has that greenish tint to it so you're gonna change this a lot and I want to bring down my fuzziness so we can be targeting some very specific colors I'm gonna take this to 30 I think the default fuzziness awesome people is set to somewhere around 40 I think like if you're using this for the first time I think the default is gonna be somewhere around 40 and once that is done click OK there you go hue and saturation one more time the reason why I like to work with hue and saturation is because it gives you like a very nice effect in a very nice way and take down the saturation up a little and there you go now just to complete the whole effect we are missing out a lot of detail on these graphs so I'm gonna complete this one last time color range click on the grass take the fuzziness up a little bit and just basically do shift clicks to get that grass proper there we go okay and this time awesome people instead of taking hue and saturation I'm gonna go for color balance so I'm gonna add a little bit of orange tint now we don't want to change the whole thing to red because again we are not going for a mystical fantasy kind of feel we're gonna go for a realism feel so this is something that can be captured by a camera if it was the right time this was not the right time therefore you were not able to get the automish kind of look but then again with this I think it looks perfect now again awesome people for the sake of the tutorial I'm gonna keep the video short but that was my main technique on how I selected the whole um, grass and all the, all the greenery and all the leaves and stuff and I was able to create my effect right here now of course you can go and uh, you know once you have done all of this and once you are satisfied with what you have done you can add like a final layer uh, without doing any sort of selection just go and go to color balance and just add like a little bit of red and just basically do a little bit of changes now of course saw some people these settings are gonna differ depending on what kind of image you have but there you go now of course for adding um, a little more feel and to just make uh, you know the image a little bit better uh, we can add a vignette but that would take away the photorealism but I'm gonna do it anyway for the sake of the tutorial uh, make like a square boxish kind of thing Something like this so you can keep the rule of thirds a little bit not exactly the rule of thirds thing but okay and then I'm gonna go to filter blur Gaussian blur this too somewhere around there and there you go this is kind of like a nice frameish effect and uh, that is what you can do with Adobe Photoshop and that's how you can do some good advanced photo manipulations or I mean color manipulations in Adobe Photoshop my name is CJ style thank you so much for watching my video everyone please subscribe like this video on YouTube this is my new channel Zen Gen Learning. I hope you are liking the tutorials. I hope you are liking the editing, the music, the lower thirds and everything. I appreciate the support. Please like this video, subscribe and new tutorials coming every weekend. Take care everyone. Thank you for watching. Peace out.